One of the haziest episodes in Bluey is an episode named Space and the multiple messages it portrays for the beloved character Mackenzie, such as his unknown desire to be alone. I want to pretend that you leave me behind and I'm all alone. Why? I don't know. This episode shines a light on a lot of key behaviors we can examine for Mackenzie throughout multiple episodes and even explains his temper. <laughs> as well as his tendency to separate himself from his friends. Because of these character traits, as well as many other things Mackenzie is seen doing, we can closely align his behavior to someone that is experiencing separation anxiety due to his past trauma, or more loosely, just anxiety in general. What's amazing about the way the studio chooses to portray this, as well as multiple different things, is their desire to make these crowds of people experiencing these conditions feel seen as well as resonate with the message on screen. And this one is no different seen as the often confusing nature of anxiety is represented with extreme accuracy, Shrew Mackenzie. I started talking about Bluey due to my history of working with kids in a therapeutic setting, which has inspired me to start this series. Anxiety is one of the most common conditions seen in today's world, so having a character to showcase this can help many individuals dealing with this to better understand what's going on and even help outside individuals identify and potentially help others around them see? with this condition. But before we get into the kit treats and popcorn of the video, uh, not again. don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much helps me out to get these videos out to more fans like you. And let's discuss what's going on with Mackenzie. What's a black hole? It's a sun that got really small and makes a hole, I think. What happens if you go in it? No one knows. Mackenzie? Mackenzie? Finished. I want to pretend that you leave me behind and I'm all alone. What are you doing here? We know you're about to go into the black hole. We've come to stop you. But I want to go in. I have to. Are you sure? Okay. My mum left me behind. Mackenzie, you know what's here now. You don't need to keep coming back to this place. To start, let's briefly go over anxiety. Anxiety is technically something everyone experiences. It's a natural defense in humans that is essentially our body telling us to stay alert, making us aware of risk, and encouraging us to solve problems. However, for some individuals, anxiety levels are higher than normal, making it in clinical terms an anxiety disorder. This anxiety does not go away and can get worse over time. Mackenzie is seen with common symptoms of high levels of anxiety in the episode space, such as being prone to anger, you leave me behind on purpose, excessive worrying, as well as Mackenzie. socially isolating himself. What's important to know is that anxiety ebbs and flows. Individuals with anxiety can have days or moments where they are cheerful, happy, and showing no anxiety at all. Mackenzie can be seen in plenty of episodes, for the most part normal. Mackenzie can be described as having a kind nature and is often seen wanting to help others, such as in the episode Creek, with him positively oh, encouraging like Bluey to make the jump the over the river. However, in a lot of different episodes, we can see him have small moments that can be taken as inappropriate slash blunt, which is a common trait within those with anxiety. For example, in Circus, his tone can be taken as a bit rude when telling Coco, I'm not your husband. And it's possible in the same episode, they chose him to be the mean line keeper as a subtle nod to this behavior. <laughs> On the other hand, people with this condition can also come off as being socially unaware, such as when Mackenzie bluntly states to Bingo that Bandit is going to the airport and even continues to press it when Bingo seems to be confused by saying, And he's gonna be gone for ages. What? Mackenzie? Now this can be attributed to his young age, of course, however, there are plenty of different kid characters that seem to actively become aware of others' change in mood, such as Rusty and Bluey. Yeah, right. I'm okay. Don't worry. 
to further cement this in Barky Boats, he can be seen even telling his buddy Captain when asked if he wants to hang out with Mia and Bluey when it seems to be clearly bothering Bandit from being apart from Mia. And even in the episode Moms and Dads, we can see him brush off Indy's proposal to play Mackenzie. as he continues <laughs> to make holes. Once again, Mackenzie is an extremely kind and well-mannered character to his peers and to adults, but these small moments are still something to take note of, as well as these holes he is creating which might seem minor, but as we move back our focus over to the phenomenal episode Space, you might notice that these serve as another excellent way to showcase his need for space. Now the episode Space is an episode that the American audience cannot access without the use of a VPN, because the episode's only being in Australia. What? Now there's about 15 different episodes that I stream through the official Australian streaming site, ABC, using a VPN because of them being exclusive to that region at the moment. And you'll also want one if you want to view all the new episodes coming out in April as well. So I'm very excited to say that this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Now Atlas VPN is the best VPN deal in the market and I'm going to show you how you can use it to access these episodes in a little bit. Hey! It's extremely easy to use and it only takes one button press to access these Bluey episodes. So I'll show you that in just a few moments. However, I just wanna say that a VPN can help you in multiple different ways by allowing you to save some coin when shopping online. It stops ads and malware. Atlas VPN protects all of your devices with a single subscription and it even keeps your Google searches in private. Now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to access these Bluey episodes. So I'm gonna pull up the program real quick on the screen here. Now when I have the program pulled up, I'll all it has is this little screen right here and all I need to do is press Australia so I'm gonna click Australia it's gonna take a few moments to connect and once connected we can go over to our internet browser and then type in ABC which is the Australian streaming website for Bluey it's gonna take a few moments to load and then you'll see that we're on the actual website now at this point all I need to do is type in Bluey it should pop up on the top left here here we go and it has all season one, two, and three of Bluey, as well as the Australian episodes such as Space. And if we go far enough to the right, you'll notice that we'll be able to find Space right about here. So now if I wanted to, I can click this and watch Space very easily. And it's really as easy as that. Of course, when you go to the website for the first time, you're going to have to create an account, but I do want you guys to have a very special offer that Atlas VPN is going to be giving for a limited time. So if you click on the description down below, you will get a deal that is just $1.83 per month plus three extra months with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you wanna watch the episode Space, I highly recommend clicking in the link in the comments or description. The episode space in itself serves as an excellent foreshadowing tool in the form of a double entendre. Not only is it to describe the game they are playing in which they're exploring space, it also represents Mackenzie's own need for space as he attempts to isolate himself from everyone multiple times. From the very beginning, Mackenzie shows an interest towards black holes after Jack briefly mentions how they could go to one in their game. What happens if you go in it? And how no one Why knows not? where they go. And as he gazes in the distance, we can slowly start to notice something is reminding him of his past. Immediately after, Mackenzie interrupts his friends Get by out! pretending the ship has been hit by a meteor and tethers himself to the ship to start repairs on the boosters. It's here the crew confirms there are no more meteors. Are there any more meteors? Negative. And once Ooh. again, Mackenzie interrupts everyone by getting hit by a make-believe asteroid, as well as removing his tether. As Rusty goes out to save his friend, we can see the first instance of the episode where Mackenzie clearly isolating himself with a worried expression. And even after returning to the ship, his face remains sad. He also chooses to remain silent and appearing almost absent-minded on the next few scenes due to him being distracted by his feelings. And it's very subtle, but for the next couple of scenes, Mackenzie makes little to no eye contact with his friends, choosing to look elsewhere. 
This is a technique that people with these conditions inherently do that encourages as little human contact as possible, showing us that he is clearly feeling anxious. As mentioned before, it's common for individuals like Mackenzie to isolate themselves when feeling anxious or stressed out. This is a self-induced coping mechanism to deal with these feelings and to avoid human interaction to allow yourself to breathe and focus on yourself. During this, he can also be observed refusing to answer Jack's questions and walking away abruptly. Now, there are instances where people with these conditions will isolate themselves to the point that it no longer helps you cope and instead starts a downward spiral, which occurs in the very next scene where Mackenzie runs away without saying a word. When discovered, he lashes out with anger, blaming his friends for leaving him behind. Why did you leave me behind? Which confuses his friends due to this blatant lie. He continues the process by stating, You did! You left me behind on purpose! After being confronted by Rusty and why they would do that, and Jack calling out his lie, Mackenzie, your tether didn't break, did it? You unhooked it. Mackenzie admits to his friends the truth and expresses what he really wants. I want to pretend that you leave me behind, and I'm all alone. Which describes the way his mind envisions his past trauma perfectly, as we'll get into later. This continued desire to escape when dealing with negative emotions also sheds some light into the way he behaves in other episodes, such as shops, where he gets frustrated by everyone and chooses to hide in the forest, as well in Mom and Dad, where he is seen alone, digging holes. Now, this particular moment can seem confusing, seeing as Mackenzie looks to be having fun and overall jolly, but it's important to note that it's possible to feel negative and positive emotions at once. So even if someone looks happy, they can still be feeling a mix of different things. The fact that Mackenzie is alone when normally he is playing with other children can be another strong sign that he has isolated himself in that moment to find an escape in the form of play, similar to what he does when playing space with Rusty and Jack, as well as slightly ignoring Indy throughout this scene. Now it's time for Polly's lunch. Let's dig another one. What? What I really love about Luda Studios is the way they often show the children using a form of play to express their feelings, and most importantly for this topic, negative feelings. An amazing example of this that we are all familiar with is in the episode Copycat, where Bluey expresses her grief from the budgie dying by reenacting the day essentially being a copycat to what Bandit did to help the bird. After Mackenzie confesses his desire to be left behind, Rusty asks him why, why? where he simply states, I don't know. It's very common when dealing with trauma, your mind chooses not to remember certain things. So when he states, I don't know, he quite literally doesn't remember what's causing him to feel this way. It's not until later where he chooses to redirect the ship's coordinates into a black hole that we learn what caused this trauma. What is the new destination? The black hole. After reluctantly joining the crew since they state that they don't know how to leave him behind without ruining the game, Mackenzie brings back up his interest in black holes by asking, Are you sure we can't go to the black hole? As the gang drifts into hypersleep to travel to Mars, Mackenzie wakes up to sabotage the ship's coordinates to send them to the, the black, black hole. hole. As Rusty and Jack wake up, they notice Mackenzie missing, and as they oh, look up to see the tether leading off the screen, we can also notice Calypso in the background staring at them all playing the game. Calypso is often used during the school scenes to teach the kids valuable lessons or to help guide them along the right path. So as we get closer and closer to a very important scene, it's a really awesome touch to see Calypso was examining them the whole time. Mackenzie is found, staring into a tunnel, hesitating to even enter. This represents the black hole. There are two different angles we see it from. One where you can see Mackenzie's worried face where the hole is dark and daunting. However, from the other angle, it's filled with light, quite literally showing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, symbolizing his dread, but also showcasing to us that there is hope. Rusty and Jack run over to him, attempting to stop him from going into the black hole. However, Mackenzie states he has to. I have to. And when asked why, why? He just says, Because I'm the chief scientist. It's my job to figure everything out. Rusty tries his best to go with him, but Mackenzie just tells him to go back to Mars. Understandably confused and concerned, Are you sure? Rusty chooses to trust his friend and salutes him off as Mackenzie quickly removes his tether, accompanied by crescendoing strings, 
where we get this amazing scene. Mom? Mom? This moment shows Mackenzie reliving his trauma via a half flashback, half dreamlike sequence where we can come to understand why Mackenzie has been feeling anxious all day. However, he is slowly approached by Calypso to comfort him. Are you okay? And as Mackenzie explains his mom left him behind, My mom left me behind. Calypso points behind him, showing his mother is there for him. Mackenzie! Hey mom! Before Calypso approached Mackenzie, he was mom? calling for his mother, and she mom? never showed up. The fact that his mom doesn't show up when being called when only Mackenzie was there gives us as an audience knowledge that Mackenzie has had an experience in his past where he was left behind at the playground, developing his separation anxiety, which is the reason why he says earlier, I want to pretend that you leave me behind and I'm all alone. It's not until Calypso points him in the right direction that his mother shows up to remind him that she came back for him. It's extremely possible that the time Mackenzie didn't see his mother was only for a few minutes. Maybe she had to step away for something really quick. However, from a child's perspective, this can be detrimental and extremely scary, making these few moments of time seem like an eternity, making Mackenzie hone in on this moment, causing him to have these periods of anxiety. It's a very similar situation to losing your parents at the grocery store, which is something I'm sure we can all resonate with to an extent due to how common of a situation it is. You lost your parents, you feel like you've been abandoned, and panic starts to set in. Interestingly enough to this parallel, you can notice the background, it appears that he's in a grocery store or maybe a mall because there's people with shopping carts as well as aisles in the background as well as the fluorescent lights. It's at this point Calypso helps him look at his trauma in a new perspective by giving this amazing message. See? There she is. Mackenzie, you know what's here now. You don't need to keep coming back to this place. Okay. This message tells Mackenzie that he doesn't need to linger on the bad part of his past, and showing that he has the support of his family and friends always present to help him move on from this tragic part of his life, and that he's no longer all alone. It also serves as an excellent way to help people with trauma by teaching them an excellent lesson that it's okay to recognize and accept what has caused you pain in your past, seeing as that's how you start the healing process from it. However, as Calypso puts it, you, you don't, don't have to, to keep, keep coming, coming back, back to, to that place. place. It's a common trap to focus on negative feelings in life, and with trauma, it can almost halt and prevent you from functioning in a normal manner, which is what we see Mackenzie doing time and time again throughout the episode. What's excellent about the way that this is portrayed is not showing that it goes away, because frankly, it's something that's going to be a part of your whole life. Instead, we can examine the way the studio shows then it might always be there, but it doesn't have to cripple you. Because after being saved by his friends from the aliens, they head back to the ship. And as he gazes into the distance with the music swelling, we can still see the black hole, his trauma. However, it's now filled with shining light, being a complete contrast to its previous black form, as well as being brighter than it was before, symbolizing his new outlook on things. And after a brief pause, instead of going to the same anxious state he was before, he chooses to regroup with his friends, ending the episode in an amazing way. The way the show decides to show how Mackenzie is feeling through body language and various techniques commonly seen in society, as well as a positive message to give support towards those who experience their own trauma is superb. This episode is a big reason why I appreciate Mackenzie as a character, especially because of the way it explains a lot of his behaviors in different episodes. The studio that creates the show purposely leaves a lot of messages up to interpretation so it can resonate with multiple different people in their own way. Because of this, I would love to hear your own interpretation on the episode. And this Sunday, we hit 15,000 subs. It was just about last week we hit 14k, so I'm feeling a little speechless on what to say, and <laughs> once again, someone went out of their way to make an art piece to celebrate this milestone literally just a few hours after I hit it. 
which is just crazy. This art is created by an artist by the name of Juice, which is wild because it's an artist that I really love and follow on Twitter as well. I remember seeing this and feeling very emotional because it cements that I have this incredible following and that people are really loving my content. Just thank you from the bottom of my heart for making me feel welcomed in this community and please check out the artists who made this. They're extremely talented, so I'll be putting a link to their Twitter on the top left so you can all check them out. And please join me next time as we do our next deep dive into the episode Bike and the amazing message it gives to never give up. So don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss it or any video that I post. At this point, I would love to share the fan art that was sent to me by the talented artists in the Bluey community. Each of these artists' Twitter handles will be on the bottom left, so I highly encourage you guys to check them out. This first piece shows Kitten's OC, which she designed as inspiration from herself by using red hair on the character because the artist herself has red hair, and I really do like the Irish settler as the breed here. It's a very cute design. Next, we move on over to this piece, of course, inspired by Sleepy Time. Now, I really do like the background, the lighting on Bingo's face. I'm a big fan of art that shows good lighting, so I really like this piece, as well as this piece here, where we can see a nice dock scene where a character is wearing a scuba diver outfit. Now, <laughs> we don't really see scuba diving outfit in Bluey, so I think this is really creative that he created his own here, as well as I really like the way that he drew the water here. I really appreciate Soft Serve Shiba, Kitten, as well as Rage and Sin for sending me their art. The community is filled with so many talented creators so it feels incredible to be given the privilege to share their talent. If you'd also like to share your art please send me a DM on my Twitter of your art so I can show it on my next video. Allow me to thank each and every one of you buddies for supporting me and giving me the privilege to continue this passion project of mine. You guys are quite literally making my dreams a reality as well as the members who support me as little as five dollar bucks a month to get me closer and closer to becoming full-time. These members are of course Clairvoyance, Rick and Glacius, Cameron, and Zach. If you'd also like to support me considering clicking the link on the top left or in the comments or description down below and make sure to of course use that atlas vpn link so you can get that deal to watch these exclusive bluey episodes and as always don't forget to like comment subscribe and i hope y'all have a great day <laughs> bye bye and the last shall be First two immersed in a pass out heat Facing him up with a moxie melt Till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell Born a cave with a torch on a wall Then a window arrangement of porcelain doll